What's up everybody, welcome back to the channel, welcome to another Pokemon Sword and Shield VGC 2021 Series 10 video. Now today I have a pretty interesting topic, it's been a minute since I actually uploaded something talking about the state of the metagame, but I am just going to be talking about how bulky, just the sheer amount of bulk the Series 10 metagame has evolved into. And now most metagames will start off very, very glass cannony, very like standard. Like we'll see a lot of Torn Ogre at the beginning. We'll see a lot of like Zacian and Reggie like at the beginning. But this series feels unique into how bulky it became because they always become bulky in the end. A lot of uh, Pokemon will start investing less into speed, a bit less into uh, attack and just focus on living hits. But this format just got crazy with how we are running. It almost feels like we're playing two singles games at the same time in a way. But yeah, before we get into that, do me a favor, if you guys enjoyed this video at any point in time, leave a like on it, subscribe to the channel, and turn on notifications because I bring you daily Pokemon Sword and Shield VGC content. And that's my comment question of the day. What do you think about the format getting this bulky, and what is your favorite just chunky Pokemon in the format? Let's go ahead and get into it. So, the format began with a heavy usage. I wish I could go back and look at like past usage. I'm not sure how I could do that. Uh, but at the beginning of the format, uh, our top three stayed the same, Incineroar, Rillaboom, Regilike, they're still top Pokemon. We saw um, Zacian as a top Pokemon, Xerneas as a top Pokemon, Kyogre as a top Pokemon, Caloric Shadow as a top Pokemon. They are all still up there. However, it's other Pokemon in usage that have risen, such as Amoongus, Stack Attacka, um, Volcaron, I guess to an extent, and Landorus Therian, um, that have sort of molded the metagame in a way that's very interesting. This is one of the few times in any VGC format as far as I can remember and I've been playing since like 2015 where Rocky Helmet has been a staple of teams. Now the reason I believe teams are getting so bulky and the reason they're running Rocky Helmet so much on so many just chunky Pokemon um, is as an adaptation to the tools that Series 10 has given us. Obviously with the general power creep of Pokemon we've gotten access to really strong Pokemon. Of course Xerneas is a very powerful Pokemon that's able to one-shotting a lot of things. Zacian in particular is one of the strongest Pokemon we've ever gotten. Uh, it's extremely powerful with a high attack stat of 170 and the natural ability to get up to plus one just by switching onto the field. So yeah, these Pokemon are disgusting. Urshu Rapid Strike is one of our greatest Pokemon. Its ability to bypass Protect on crit at every hit is very disgusting. Um, and as a response, people who are smart, people who team build well, have discovered that there is a lot of merit to building things chunky like this. We see a lot of Rocky Helmet usage because it's able to punish things like Zacian and uh, Urshu Rapid Strike from attacking. On top of that, it's a very fake out heavy metagame. Uh, Rillaboom and Incineroar don't like touching Rocky Helmet Pokemon, especially uh, Landorus, Therian, and Zapdos. Where Amoongus, it's mainly just a hard wall for um, Rillaboom, but Rocky Helmet is such a viable item right now, honestly, especially on Amoongus, which is it's, these are like the, for these Pokemon, these are like the most common sets you see right now, and these are like the bulkiest Pokemon I can think of in the metagame. Um, but essentially, Amoongus gets so much value out of Rocky Helmet because it doesn't really need any kind of reliable recovery. It's able to run Regenerator, uh, which allows it to gain health by switching in and out in the field, gaining 30% of its health back every time it does that. And with such a pivot-heavy format, with Pokemon like Landorus and Incineroar running U-Turn and Parting Shot, it's very easy for this thing to get on the field and just recover. Uh, on top of that, Amoongus, while running a Rocky Helmet super defensive set, is also running Pollen Puff as its most common attacking move. And honestly, it's really rare to see anything that isn't Pollen Puff. We actually look at Amoongus, um, its number one attacking move beyond its like, you know, support moves is Pollen Puff, 57% usage. And why is that? Pollen Puff is just a phenomenal move for supporting its teammates. And I guess we can go and look at it. Um, you commonly see Amoongus next to pretty much everything in the format, Xerneas, uh, Zacian Crowned. But I think one of the best Pokemon it's next to right now is actually going to be um, Eveltal. And the main reason is Eveltal is already a chunky Pokemon, right? It's able to recover with Oblivion Wing, but Amoongus is able to heal its partners by using Pollen Puff and targeting into its partner, healing 50% of their health. It's effectively an offensive heal pulse, which next to Stack Attacka, that's phenomenal. It's able to just be such a valuable teammate and putting this to sleep, like obviously it's, it's just great. It's a Pokemon that stays in the field for a long time and allows for uh, you to make minor mistakes and still be able to recover. And honestly, I think that's what's so great about Series 10. It feels so skill-based right now. Um, effectively, because of how bulky the formats become, it's no longer a case of, oh, I got crit once, or oh, I got missed once, this game is over. There's so much to be done 
when it, in terms of like positioning and recovering and pivoting that you're able to come back from a negative situation like that just an unfortunate thing so yeah i think lander's therian is one of the biggest anomalies in the format right now uh lander's therian is currently its most common set and this feels wacky to say is a special attacking physically defensive rocky helmet pokemon now why has lander's therian evolved this way um, Lander's Therian is already one of the bulkiest Pokemon that we have um, effectively because of its Intimidate ability. Uh, it's also got a pretty okay typing defensively. It's able to resist poison moves. It's able to resist... Um, what else does it resist? Why am I why am I just blanking here? It's able to switch on like Regieleki and stuff. Uh, and it's just got naturally good bulk with 89 and 90 and 80 in its defensive stats. However, when you max out that defense stat... Uh, and give it a rocky helmet it is capable of living just absurd hits obviously it can switch in on things like um like incineroar's fake out it can switch in on incineroar flare blitz it can switch on rillaboom uh grassy glide and punish them by giving them rocky helmet damage while also intimidating them but it's able to switch in on crazy pokemon like zacian and easily live a behemoth blade because of how much defense you invest into it and then punish it with that damage and also go for an earth power which the reason we've shifted over to special landers is because the heavy usage of uh rillaboom means that Earthquake, its most reliable stab move, is no longer that reliable. It deals uh, half damage whenever Grassy Terrain is active. And with an Intimidate Heavy metagame, Lander's Therian wouldn't be good unless it adapted to be a special attacker. So by running a defensive special attacking set with Earth Power as its main stab, and sometimes Sludge Bomb as a coverage option, it's able to still be a reliable Pokemon, and I found a lot of uses for it in previous teams, whether it be this um, Thievul team that I made or this uh, Evelthal team. So yeah, it's still a great Pokemon, and honestly, I'm really happy for it. Like, it's such a... It, I think Rocky Helmet Landers is about as hype as Landers Therian will ever be. Um, but yeah, the other thing about Landers that's kind of crazy is it does have a chance to switch in on and live a hit from Urshifu Rapid Strike, even if it's Surging Strikes, and punish it with 50% of its health being gone because of the Rocky Helmet. And that's the main reason Amoongus is so big, is it's able to switch in on Urshifu Rapid Strike easily, but also just many Pokemon in the metagame. And punishing Urshifu Rapid Strike with a Rocky Helmet hit is just absurdly good. So yeah. Zapdos is originally a Pokemon that a lot of people slept on, despite its uh, pretty natural viability. Uh, and it's mainly being run as a super defensive Pokemon uh, with Roost, Thunderbolt, Hurricane, Protect, and a Rocky Helmet in the static ability. Obviously, it's able to naturally resist hits from Rillaboom and Zacian, which are two of the most common Pokemon in the format. But it's also able to um, deal massive damage to other common Pokemon, such as uh, Kyogre and Thunderous, uh, or Tornadus, which is really cool. Uh, it's able to run Roost as a way to recover health, and Static being able to uh, paralyze things is also really nice because it's sort of a passive speed control option. So yeah, uh, Zapdos picking up in usage on Groudon teams is pretty cool. Obviously, they don't typically run Hurricane on Groudon teams, but um, on other teams like Zacian teams with uh, any kind of rain mode on it, uh, obviously they're going to run Hurricane. So yeah, I think Zapdos is really nice right now. It's honestly such a fun Pokemon. We already know what Incineroar does. It's been like the face of bulk since the format came out. Fake out, parting shot, snarl, flare blitz. That's pretty much the gist of it. Sometimes it runs throw chop as a way to avoid like roar and snarl. But beyond that, Incineroar, you're used to seeing it. Stack Attack is obviously one of the most powerful Pokemon in the metagame, essentially acting like a second restricted at times. Um, it's able to bypass its intimidate weakness to Incineroar by running body press in a defense boosting set. Obviously this thing, is, it's, it's able to resist so much. It's able to switch on Zacian's uh, Behemoth Blade pretty effectively. It's able to switch in on Rillaboom's hits pretty effectively. Urshu Rapid Strike is one of its best counters. It's able to switch in on uh, Xerneas. It's able to switch in on uh, Caloric Shadow to an extent. Uh, and yeah, like it's, it's such a good defensive Pokemon and being able to set up Trick Room and just sweep things with Beast Boost is so nice. Obviously it has to run Safety Goggles to not lose to Amoongus, uh, but yeah, it's such a great Pokemon. And I think what really what really just punctuates how bulky this format is becoming, some of our most common Tailwinders, and I'm also going to pull up Tornadus right now, some of our most common Tailwinders are running super bulky sets. This Tornadus, one of its most common sets is actually Wakanberry 236-164-44460. They're getting super bulky. Suicune is probably the main example of this though. Inner Focus means it's immune to fake out and intimidate, not that the intimidate really matters, uh, but being able to have an unfake outable, easily able to tank like a Thunderbolt from Regieleki or like um, any kind of hit from Zacian and wall it out. 
uh, Tailwind Setter is really great. You often see these things next to Zacian because of that. Uh, it's just such a great switch in onto a lot of Pokemon. Um, it's also able to spam Snarl and Scald as a way of dealing with physical attackers with a burn or even special attackers uh, like Calyrex Shadow uh, by dealing massive damage to Calyrex Shadow and lowering the special attack and also kind of hard walling out Kyogre Tornadus to an extent while also having secondary recovery, or not recovery, uh, speed control of Icy Wind. Like it has so many tools and it's so cool to see Suicune getting heavy usage in this format just basically as like a bulky defensive Tailwind setter. That's crazy. That's crazy. And like I said, Tornadus itself is also becoming bulkier, opting to run a Wakan Berry with a bulky set over a Focus Sash. Because Focus Sash is so easy to play around, you just break it and KO it. It's just it's just a really exploitable set. I think the fact that the format's become uh, becoming so much bulkier is just a testament as to like how skill based it is. Like this is just crazy. Um, and also, someone like the most offensive Pokemon in the format are also adjusting to being super bulky. Zacian Crowned, bet you never would have thought this. One of the most common sets is running 220 HP with like no attack investment. And why is that? Well, here's an example of a phenomenon that I call Kartana Syndrome. Kartana in previous formats is similar to Zacian. It's a powerful, fast steel type with, obviously Zacian is much bulkier than it, but it has such an absurd attack set. And Zacian effectively has a higher attack set than Kartana because of the fact that it has Intrepid Sword. So what Kartana actually ended up doing for the longest time is they would run something along the lines of like enough speed for like base 100 Pokemon, max special defense, and like summon HP and maybe like, maybe like one in attack, maybe like a little bit of attack with an Assault Vest. And the reason they did this is because Kartana really didn't need any attack investment. Kartana, like with, with attack investment, I think it picked up like maybe one more KO with a non-stab move, but it really didn't need it. It was still such a threatening Pokemon with a high attack stat. Zacian takes this to an extreme. You can literally get away with running like a super, super bulky Zacian with no offensive investment because you're able to run things like Swords Dance if you really need to, but you honestly don't even need the Swords Dance. You can run this exact spread. And I know on paper, you know, 220, you know, like this, you can't really visualize how bulky that is, right? But I want you to just, I'm just going to give you a visual real quick as to how bulky that truly is. So this guy to level 50, just so we can look at the bars, uh, 220, 250, 236. So that's an adamant nature, meaning we're already boosting our attack passively. 220, 250, or er, was that 252? Yeah, 252, 36. You are max special defensation, meaning you easily switch in on, and also because also, you have like a decent defense stat, you able, you're able to switch in against uh, opposing Zacian, you're able to switch on against opposing Kyogre, easily live the hit, you're able to hard wall, not hard wall, but you're able to like easily tank hits from like even plus one Calyrex Shadow Rider, and you probably still KO most of those things with Behemoth Blade because you're running the adamant nature over the jolly nature. And the adamant nature actually makes a pretty huge difference, even if you're not invested. Like, it's not a big jump in attack stat. So as you can see, Zacian, with an adamant nature and no investment, is 209 attack. If we were to switch that to Jolly and max it out... We go up to 222. What is that? That's like a... That's a 13 point jump. We literally get 13 more points by doing that. Like, that's... You don't need to invest into attack and Zacian. That's absurd. You can literally run such a bulky version and people are catching on to this. It has Kartana syndrome right now. And yeah, like it's crazy. I mean, obviously like um, other Pokemon that typically run like max max, but have like um, a reputation for becoming bulkier as the format uh, goes on. Xerneas is one of those Pokemon. Xerneas is able to run modest with like enough defense so at minus one it can take like a gyro ball from stack attacker or something and still it's one of the best pokemon in the format because it doesn't need to be you know that fast it's able to boost both of its uh stats special attack and speed uh with the power of geomancy and just sweep so yeah like honestly like i i don't know this was just like a video where i wanted to talk about how bulky this format is and i want to talk about how good that is for competitive play people might be getting upset like oh everything's getting stally but stall really doesn't exist in doubles unless it's like chancy stall like, that's such a rare thing. Like, we have Eternatus stall, but this isn't Eternatus stall. This is literally everything in the format is becoming bulky enough to take hits from some of the most powerful Pokemon that we've ever had access to. And that's allowing us to play a more pivot heavy defensive game that just, it, it rewards good players. And honestly, I think, I think that's why I'm enjoying this format so much. But yeah, this was an unscripted video with a couple of notes. 
This is more along the lines of me just talking about why this format feels so good to play and why this format has gotten so thick, I guess. So yeah, let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. If you guys enjoyed, subscribe to the channel, turn on notifications, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.